the 12. So what we call, so who can tell us what you understand by the Agile Manifesto? I've used the, this statement like three times today. So what do you understand by the Agile Manifesto? Is it a set of principles and values that guides the delivery of the project? Thank you. Yes, that's what it is. So whenever you hear about the Agile Manifesto, think about these 12 principles and you think about these four values. That's what we call the Agile Manifesto. Because the reason why I'm emphasizing on that is because just this term, this word manifesto usually can get some people confused or scared like what the manifesto. That's just what it is. It's just the name they choose to put. So starting with the four values, these are the four values that if you call yourself an agile practitioner or an agile organization, you have to be thriving to uphold to these values. Now, let's start with the first one. Or let's, I would like someone to give us their understanding of these agile values. What is the connection between the left side of the values and the right side of the values? Okay. Uh, the, can you hear me? The left, okay. Well, I say, okay, the, the, my right side. No, let me use your left. Okay, your left side, the, the processes and tools, those are the things you need to be able to function well to achieve uh, the opposite side, which is you know, my left-hand side, that is your right-hand side. So you need processes and tools for individuals to an interaction, uh, comprehensive documentation to, uh, to get a working software, following a plan, and following a plan to, for you to respond to change. So you need a plan, then uh, contract negotiation, that is what the agreements you need to bind, uh, I mean, like a contract between the uh, customer and the, the developers or the development team. Okay, I mean, thank you. Uh, don't know. Thank you for your input. We appreciate it. Yeah, uh, we try. Yeah, uh, can I try? Yes, you can. So I see Zenobia's hand up. So maybe let's hear from Zenobia first. Okay. <laughs> I only have one. The individuals and interactions that um, the example that we were given was the daily stand-up, how it's more important for us to communicate and collaborate as a team versus um, get together and say, well, the Scrum just wants you to say these three things and be done with it, which is the um, processes and tools. We value those, but it's more important that we're communicating and collaborating versus touching those three subjects. I think you have a very good memory <laughs> faculty. How do you even call that? Because I remember that was a conversation we had in the other class. I used to remember every word of it. Good job. All right, um, Adeyemi. Okay, so what I can say or uh, understand most about it is uh, the left side is more people-centered, people interaction, um, making it a working software than just documentation, uh, following and responding to things, if there is any, rather than following a particular plan that might not be visible all the time. Their customer interaction too. So basically, it's going to be they're encouraging conversations between customers, people, and uh, developers, and those delivering the value and value driven too. Okay, thank you very much. Any other input? Yeah, I can try. Okay. Yeah, so for the individual and interaction, so for Scrum, we more believe on uh, like face to face, whereas we meet as a team. As the work is going to be able to um, interact and okay, hold on, hold on, sorry, you mean for agile, right? Yeah, for agile. Mm -hmm. And the other side is waterfall. So as the other side, what waterfall the more believable like process and tools, whereas the other side is agile, we more believable like face to face interaction. By then, 
we are able to um um to if any in the impediment we are able to pick it up due to the interaction that we are having as the work is going and also the working software which is the increment that we are able to come up with at the end of this uh, at the sprint over the comprehensive documentation whereas water uh, waterfall is more of paperwork that um they don't care about the at the end like for a um in the increment. So, and respond to change, Agile is more flexible compared to waterfall. So, waterfall, they follow like a strict, um, a strict process. Whereas for Agile, we um, encourage change. Even like the, it's not um, it's not like it's not encouraged, but it's flexible. We still can mm -hmm. over change as the sprint is going. And the last one, which is customer collaboration. So as the sprint is going, the work is going, customers are full involved. They can see um, everything as the work is going. Cust customers are involved into it compared to waterfall. So that's my understanding. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let me also give, add my own piece to everything you all have said. First of all, I need you to see all every single word here has a meaning. Every single thing you see around here, everything. Starting from people-centric and value-driven. I need you to pay attention to these two key things. That is agile for you. If you like, you're going up, you're coming down. As long as you don't have people you, you don't have, your goal is not centered around satisfying people by delivering value to them. You're wasting your time. If you care, you do all the agile in the world, all those scrum practices. As long as at the center of your mind, it's not about how do I satisfy my customers by delivering high quality value to them? How do I keep the people working for these customers happy while they're doing what they're doing? How do I make their life easy? How do I motivate them to enjoy what they're doing while keeping our customers happy? That's what Agile is all about for you. These two words here. That's it. And then coming here, well, let me first of all clarify. If you check in the whole of this whole agile values and principles, you will not really hear um, a lot about employees, but Karen decided to modify it based on all the recent changes and the um, advancements in the practice I decided to want to recognize employees to, to put them out there in the spotlight. Because if your employees are not happy, no customer is getting any quality, whether I like it or not. So the reason why I am confident or I have been preaching this very confidently without any fear is because the, the day, um, that was one and a half years ago or two years, one and a half years ago, the 25th, 20th um, anniversary of the Agile Manifesto, I was so fortunate enough to attend the ceremony. And the founders of this Agile Manifesto were the ones conducting the ceremony. So when they were having these conversations and then they were evaluating the pitfalls or the downsides of the original manifesto that was established, which is still this one, it hasn't been updated ever since. And some of the conversation that, that came up was, okay, we've been talking a lot about people, people, people. Who are the people here? Because we've been seeing a lot of customers, 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 but nothing, we've not really seen a situation where you clearly point the light on the employees. So where does the employees come into this whole people-centric um, mindset? That was when they actually acknowledged that yes, that's really a downside. And it was a whole anal analyzing of that particular point. And they had a conversation that, yeah, they are looking to 
um, um, come up with a new version of the Agile Manifesto. And that's one of the changes that they'll be, they'll be bringing into it, really pointing the light on the employee part of the people. Because currently what we have here is really, if you look closely, you would only see that the people-centric is more about customers. But when you go to read in between the lines in books, you will see that other authors are really stressing and emphasizing on um, treating employees' rights, treating your employees the way you want to be treated, um, coming up with different activities to motivate them so that they can deliver value. That's why I decided to also frame my own and point the light right from the beginning as I am helping people understand these agile ways of working. So it's not only about customers, because if your employees are not happy, <laughs> the customers will feel it, <laughs> whether they like it or not, you know. So yes, that's the people aspect. So see the people-centric part as two. The people doing the work and you, my, I, who, the people that I consider as those doing the work are really the developers. Because most of the time we neglect these people, leadership is taking all the credit. Meanwhile, the people doing the real work are not even being recognized, you know. So yes, talking about that point, the people doing the work and customers. And then what are we doing? We are looking through all of these different things we are doing, through whether it's Chrome, Kanban, whatever. All we want to do at the end of the day is to deliver results. Not just saying we are doing work. We want to make sure that at the end of the day, the customers can use what we have created and it is in high quality. It's giving them value and they can choose to sell it or, or put it in the market at any time. So it's usable, shippable, and valuable. All right. And then now on these four values, um, Maggie was talking a lot about waterfall, waterfall when talking about the right side. Yeah, this right side, um, these would be the common practices that would happen in the standard project management approach. But I wouldn't categorize that like clearly waterfall because there are different approaches of project management that also, especially the, everything we consider as traditional, that really, um, um, they are big on this right side. Now, look at this, this, this here the scale, and then look at this word over. Agile is saying that even though the right side is important, so your right is my right, is, we are all on the same page here, we say the same. Even though the right side is important, we value the left side more. We are weighing more on the left side. That's what is, they are saying here. It's not like we are canceling the right side completely. We are not. But we value the left side more because that's what is really important to the customers. And that's what's important to help us get to our destination, which is to deliver value to the customers. And when we say we are delivering value, it means that we are producing the right thing and we are producing the thing right and we are producing the right thing, the right way, fast. These three key things. That's what we are saying. So how do we make sure that we are producing the right thing? We are producing whatever we are producing the right way. So that is the, the, the quality here we are talking about. And then we are delivering this value fast to the customers. We do that by upholding to these four values on the left side. That's what these agile values are really telling us. It doesn't mean that the right side is not important. And the reason I'm emphasizing on this point is because when you see most of even agile leaders out there, they'll be telling you that, nope, agile says we, we are only focusing on the, the left side. That's what is important. Now that we are in an agile era, the, the right side is not important. You see a scrum master, in an organization, they, they don't want to take no notes. They don't want to craft out no, maybe document any of the framework or, or scrum guideline. They will not do that. And they want to ask them, they'll tell you that, but the value says you should not document anything. That's not what it's saying. That's why it says that individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Yes, 
Processes and tools are important, but we value individual interactions more. Comprehensive documentation is important, but we value working software more. So on this very second value here, you cannot only focus on, on working software. Yes, at the end of the day, we want, we want a tangible functionality that we can use. Because if we go sit there and spend six months just to draw, come up with um, a project plan, because that's really the old way, though. They would take like six months to just to come up with a plan, going through the planning phase. Customers, what are they doing with their plan? They need something that they have to work on. Now, in most of the regulatory environments, like medical device, like medical industry, financial industry, even if you have a working software, you have to document, especially if your environment is being regulated by some FDA or something like that. You have to document stuff for them to fulfill your regulatory um, requirements. Even though customers are the one, I mean, our customers will be getting the software, but we have to document these things. And then another way to look at it is, even if you create the software and you don't document nothing, how are the users even gonna understand how to use it? They still need a manual, you see? So that's why it's important. And then the third one, even though following a plan is important, we value responding to change more because people's mind change, changes at any time. The, the example um, Zenobia talked about, the cassette to CD. Imagine if we, we are not flexible enough to respond to change. This person has already given us an order to produce, let's say, one million cassettes. And then one week later, this person realized that a smarter person has, um, um, come up with this cool new, new idea to do do um, CD. Now we're not even talking about CDs anymore. <laughs> we now have all this um, online audio stuff. So who is going to buy us your, your cassettes? Nobody. You will just be doing it for yourself. Nobody will buy. So now you have to be flexible enough based on the changes in the market to adjust to that. And then you contact your us doing the work really quickly. That Nope. I think we, I need this change to happen. You cannot say no because you're working for the customers. If you were following a strict plan, how are you going to adjust to that? Yes, we want to have some form of planning. Yes, it's good, but we want to be open to respond to change as we go. And then this last one, yes, contract negotiation is good, but we value customer collaboration more. So you want to be open to collaborating with customers and make these changes as you go, as opposed to just signing a contract and say, yes, that's it. The contract states that and we are not going against any contract because you already signed it. No, we want to right from the beginning, have an understanding that, okay, we all will be discovering as we go. We'll be learning and we'll be adjusting as we go. That's the deal. And at the end of the day, by the time we say that the product is complete, it's really transparent. There is transparency and visibility into the cost of it because we all have worked through it together. We all are able to see how much we've put into it so that you will not say we're overcharging you or anything like that. We all did this together. So that's really what these values are talking about. And on everything I've explained here, really emphasizing that we are not saying the right side is not important. We are only saying the left side is more important than the right side or we value the left side more. This is it that is summarized here. Most people always miss this statement. That is, while there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. You will hardly hear agile practitioners talking about this, this one here. They never talk about it. It's clearly stated there. So now, because you've passed through this program, you will not make that mistake. All right, any question on this? All right, now, what is your understanding of these 12 principles? I don't, you don't need to talk about them individually. I mean, what do you understand? What, when you hear the 12 principles, what comes to your mind? I would say that it's the mindset 
that the team needs to have and the items that the Scrum Master needs to look out for and ensure that they're happening on the team. Okay. Thank you. Any other input? Um, a SWOT organization, um, software organization, mostly are using and that is helping organization to deliver high quality value to their customers. Okay, thank you. Well, I think that, uh, mm -hmm. that is a working principle that the Scrum team needs to, need to achieve the desired goal for okay. the customer. Or... Okay, and AME? It's a people-centric and a mm -hmm. motivated worker so they can deliver value. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, it encourages um, simplicity, delivering regularly, um, having a working software, and uh, more like a mind mindset encouraging all those. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I would say everything that you all have said is pretty okay. Um, but how I need you to see this is see these twelve principles as the reasoning behind these four values. These 12 principles have been put in place just to further expand shape on these four values. That's it. So for example, looking at our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of value, valuable software. So, According to you, that particular um, principle I've read, where does it apply here? Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Where does it apply here according to you? Working software. Okay. Outcomes. I'll, if you ask me, I'll take number one and two. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software. I'll take number one and two. And one thing I want to emphasize is looking at it this way, there is really no right or wrong answer. But what I need you to understand is that these 12 principles are only explaining these four values. They are just reasoning behind the four values. That's really what it is. So I would, when you go back, just take your time, spend some time on it. But one thing I need you all to understand is that you nobody will be asking you in an exam for those who has to go take a certification that what are the 12 principles and values. Nobody will really ask you that. But in an interview, even though we are not in an interview class here, but in an interview, the kind of question that may come up around this is, so according to you, which of the, the Scrum, the Agile principles is the most important? That's what they, they can commonly ask you, or they may ask you, which one really resonates with you? So you will pick on anyone and tell them, and there is really no right or wrong answer on this, trust me. But it all depends on, they are just trying to test your understanding of these values and principles. You see, but me, if you ask me, I typically pick this first one because this first one, again, speaks to everything that's really important to me. And that's why you and I are here in this program today because the people part of things is so important to me. And this first principle here, really focusing on people, to me is the most important. Making sure that the people working for you are happy doing what they're doing. Because me, I join an organization and if I realize that their culture is messy, I'm leaving, I'm not staying. I want to be happy doing what I'm doing. If I wasn't happy doing what I'm doing now, I wouldn't even be here with you right now. I think See? number five is just as good. Yes, build projects around motivated. Thank you. So this particular point is a point I talked about regarding the downside of these values. You know, yeah, that they, they're not really pointing the light on the on the um, people doing the work part. Everyone keeps talking about the customs. 
Yes, but this number five here, that's what I am really talking about. So we have three minutes more. I would like us to talk about number 10 because most people hardly ever understand number 10. That's my favorite. Thank you, girl. <laughs> so if you would help us understand your understanding, that would be great. As an older person now, it's truly the way that I live my life. I'm, I, When I was younger, I felt like everything had to be done. And now I've learned to prioritize. I'm going to complete the tasks that are going to give me the greatest return or the greatest value. If it's something that's not going to bring any value, it can stay on the list. Either I'm not going to do it or I'll get to it when I get to it. And it's it's a wonderful way to be. I'm, I feel like I'm older. Like my life is at least 50% over and I'm not wasting any extra time on anything that's not going to bring value to the table. Amazing. Amazing. You couldn't have said it any better. That's just exactly what the 10th principle is saying. Simplicity. Keep it simple. Don't want to just do everything just because you want to claim busy. You see, so simplicity, it goes for that to say the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Not doing what is necessary. Essential. Thank you. As we work and progress, we want to be able to identify the things that are not important and not do them. That's really what it's saying. It's essential to maximize the work you would not do. Only do the ones you need as opposed to the ones you just feel like doing. The simple example I usually like to use is just think about Excel spreadsheet, Excel document. I can swear that you all, you've never used even 10%, you've only used maximum like 10% of the entire Excel functionalities. Most people fall in that same category. It means that all of the remaining like 90% was really useless, you see? But because they did, they created that tool in the days of the old ways of working, they, they didn't know that they have to maximize the identification of the 90% that's never used and not do them. That's really what it is, the 10th principle. So we are out of time. Once the recording becomes available as usual, I'm going to share. Thank you all so much. Oh, before I go, I just want to um, just there. I just want to invite you. Well, invite. Yeah. So if you're interested, um, I would just want to give you the opportunity to join level two on Monday, the Monday session, just to shadow and see what's going on there. So it's fire in there. It's a whole different level. So I just want you to take a glance and see what's happening. You know, we usually have previous students come in and just talk and share some of the experiences so monday something like that may be happening and i usually like to invite people you know just to see what's going on so i will be sharing the link on our site on our group so that anybody if you have the chance you're free to join and again feel free to invite your family friends whoever you don't mind all right thanks everyone and have a great weekend thank you thank you Bye. you as well thank you thank you Thank you.